Hello ladies, welcome back to my channel. Micah is here <laughs> involuntarily today, um, but I wanted to bring him up here to say hello to everybody. Say hi Micah. Say hi Micah. Yeah. Um, he has gotten so ginormous, but for all those who are new, my name is Olivia and this is my sweetheart. I'm going to let him go before him gets violent, but he has gotten so big, so big. Um, so I thought we would, we would say hi, <laughs> but there you go. Go back to your space. Okay. So <laughs> welcome back for today's video. I thought I would talk a little bit about my shaper journey and then get into yesterday's wrap with this beautiful Lakeshore Bliss scarf and then move on to some, some fun Rapunzel stuff. And then, um, Maybe if I have some time to chit chat about some interesting things going on around the house and um, why my videos are not being posted as often. So, okay, let's get started with the shaper. Now, I know I've, I've talked about this a couple of times. Um, my favorite shaper has always been the Wendy. Um, it was my very first shaper uh, style and it's just been uh, an absolute favorite over over the time I've been wrapping. Um, but recently I decided that I wanted to try out my Uber again. Um, when I first put it on my head, it does give excellent volume. It's, it's a really awesome stays put shaper, but it was just too big. Um, it was heavy. It was uncomfortable for me to wear. Um, and it was just, it just wasn't me. So, um, another thing that I was, I was, having trouble with is it made me look like I had octopus head. Now <laughs> that may seem kind of weird, but I have my head and then it would cinch in here. And then I have this big bulbous piece at the back. And that wasn't the, the look that I was going for. If you like it, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dissing it. It's just not my aesthetic. Um, but I didn't like that octopus head. It was sitting further up and it gave that 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 pinched in i think i think i could get it now the pinched in octopus kind of head thing and i was like no that's not me so um anyway i think it was was it a month ago a month and a half ago i can't remember now um quarantine days all run together so it could have been yesterday or 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 this time last year it's it's all the same so um I decided I wanted to try again with the Uber and I pulled out about this much of the fluffing and that's a decent amount pulled out um, and it made it hang differently and it made it more comfortable. It gave more space inside for my hair to go, which is important because I've got a lot of it. Um, so it, it just, it's just, it's just way more comfortable than it was. So I'm going to be giving this a, a good, a good shot. Um, I wore it all day yesterday and I mean completely all day until like 10 30 last night from about 10 ish in the morning yesterday, say like 10 30 yesterday morning to 10 30 last night. I wore it the entire day and it was super, super comfortable and no issues. So, um, I'm thinking, you know, after yesterday's, when I was posting yesterday, um, in the afternoon, evening, I said, this might be my go-to shaper. Um, I wasn't joking. This is way more comfortable right now than my Wendy. Um, and again, I said, Wendy was my first shaper and my, until this point, my absolute favorite shaper. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that might change because this is actually quite comfortable. And I'm thinking, oh, pillow. So, okay. So editing me, um, I'm totally not going to throw away my Wendy's. Um, I do still like my Wendy's. I just think that it's time to replace them. They're, they're pretty old. Um, when I do replace them, just, just the thought, um, that occurred to me, I'm only going to be buying two, one black and one white. I don't, I don't see the need to have a brown and a and a gold one, a brown and a blonde one, just the the black 
and the white one. I think I think that's what I'm going to be doing from now on for any shapers that I get. I will just buy a black one and a white one so that I can do my my favorite thing with wearing the dark scarves with the black shaper and the light scarves with the white shaper. But I just wanted to add that in here since I neglected to discuss that before. Yesterday's wrap was an easy peasy regal wrap. It was I guess an angled regal wrap because I like the angles for my face. So what I did is I have this beautiful Lakeshore Bliss. The Lakeshore Bliss pleats on its own with without having to do it um, purposely. Um, I took my Lakeshore Bliss and I folded over just a little tiny bit. The amount that gets folded over depends on the size of your shaper. This one is big. So I need a lot of this scarf to cover up the shaper itself. Now when I put it on, I want one long and one short end. The short end I just want big enough or long enough to come up, come up and cross, come up and over and just end right about here. It doesn't have to go too much further than that. All right, so I'm putting it on in an angle, just like so. I'm going to gather up underneath I'm going to tie a knot. I don't typically do that, but I am tying the knot in the back because I did it yesterday. With the short end coming out, where are you? On the bottom. There you are. Okay. Okay, so what I mean by the short end being long enough is it just comes up long enough to go just to like right here. This is it. Okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do now is figure out how this is going to want to to fold to fold in the ends neatly. Okay, just like so. And I'm doing the other side as well just just to be prepared. So because I'm going to be using one hand to hold and the other to bring up. There we go. This fluttery piece is always in the back. And I want to fold it in just a tad, fold it in just a tad. Now this side here, I just wanted the front and the back folded. I'm kind of just gathering it up and pulling up. And allowing the pleats to fall where they may. Now I want do want to pull this back just a little bit so it's not all bunched up around my face. I think that's too bulky in that area. And I just want to smooth out any weirdness because this, I want it to be, be flat. I don't want to have it bumpy and lumpy. So just taking these guys and I'm gonna flatten them out. Okay. Stuff those there. All right, so I'm going to do going to bring this long tail up and hold in place the first tail. Okay, just like so. Right, and that gave me some really great accidental pleats. Pulling this back, I'm going to spin it, I'm going to take it around the back show you right like this just giving it a quick tug just to adjust the bulk in the back and I'm going to tuck this away just like so okay making sure all these are tucked Okay, it gives it a nice, a nice shape in the back. You can see from the side. Okay, no octopus head. Now I'm going to move this back a little bit because I don't want it all bunched up here because I think that's part of the problem is it getting in between the velvet band and the poof in the back and it squeezes and it gives you that bulb, this back end. So I just want a nice smooth shape. 
So I'm just going to adjust that a little bit. So I have this on the side. The front, I did leave this little teeny tiny bit of the shaper showing. I do not normally show my shaper. I'm really, I'm really obsessive about hiding that. But for some reason with the black shaper, the velvet isn't, isn't so, um, obnoxious. It doesn't look so much like underwear. Um, it, it just looks like another piece of fabric underneath. So I don't, I did, and I don't understand why, why I feel that way, but if it were a white shaper, mm -mm, nope, it's like, mm -mm, no, but this does, didn't, this didn't affect me in the same way as, as showing the white. So I do want to adjust this one weird lying piece just because it's on end. Other than that, these are nice free forming pleats. And they are beautiful. Okay. I lied one more piece. Okay. So that gives that nice, um, I don't want to say cylindrical, excuse me, my nose etched. Um, but it gives that nice smooth shape in, to this. And I go one more time so you can see all the, all the pieces. All right, Micah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to snap a photograph real quick and I'll add it in here. Goodness. Okay, so this is the wrap that I wanted to do for you today. Now talking about Rapunzel Mail. Um, I think I mentioned this on my Facebook page, but I haven't talked about it here. Oh my goodness, my shirt wrote up. Um, I definitely was happy last year with the Rapunzel membership. Um, really, really, really love the scarf of the month. So that was definitely the thing that made me want to have the, the membership because I had purchased before the scarf of the month and was really happy with the scarves. So for me, scarf of the month, well, well worth the membership price. Um, so last year, first year doing, was first year for everybody doing it. Um, I re-upped this year, I re, um, resubscribed. So one of the things about resubscribing is I got a free shaper. Now, so when I was choosing my shaper, I chose to get the white Uber for the free shaper from Rapunzel. Why is this so hot? Oh, I fell with my, my power cord for my computer. It was, whoops. Um, so it's a, I should say the box that uh, attaches to the power cord was a little warm. All right. So I got the white one. I do need to modify this by taking out about so much floof and it'll be just like this one and I'll be, it'll be awesome. So I'm going to be alternating between this one and this one. Oh, that's all my head and I'm moving my head. Um, so it'll be fun. It'll be fun. But I liked, I really did like, um, like this. It's like a pillow. <sighs> side tracking, side tracking. Get back on track. Um, so the shaper, I'm excited for that challenge to be coming up. Also, it had to be a white. I have the black one. I had to have a white one because I have dark scarves and light scarves. I don't wear light scarves with the black um, shaper and I don't wear dark scarves with a white shaper because the dark scarves tend to rub off on to the white velvet and that's just not a good look. So dark, I'd like to have the one dark and the one white anyway so that I can I can wear them accordingly. Okay. So that was the free shaper. Now also I'm going to dig in this bag. Also as part of the resubscription, I got a resubscription kit. Now this is, this is really interesting. You know, when we, for, when I first signed up, I got the welcome kit, which was the bag with the keychain and, um, a lovely note from Andrea. And a few, a few more things, you know, to, as the welcome gift, 
this is in place of a welcome gift. This is a thank you for resubscribing kit. At least I believe that's what it is. It's like, this is awesome. Um, so don't quote me on it, but because I didn't ask, um, I just, I'm assuming, I know assuming is bad, but I'm assuming that that's like, you know, taking the place of the welcome kit. It's the um, thank you for resubscribing kit. Now, this is super amazing. We have here one five strip sari sash. This is an amazing, all the, all of these have black backgrounds. Um, with the exception of this one is navy blue. And this one has, here we'll go through each strip. This is red patterned on a black background. This one is a black background with blue and red and green on it. These are like nice flowers. This is a black background with white design. Okay, this one is the navy blue with flowers. It's got lots of different colors. You get the a little, little gold, a little mustard, a little, of course, navy, the bright pink orange it's cool it's cool um this one is the black with the beautiful paisley designs so you have a little bit of all the colors in here in here i like it i really enjoy this i could see this going with a lot of different scarves not just the scarf that it came with in the kit but i can definitely see wearing this with with any number of colors and having it look absolutely stunning so I'm, I'm definitely pleased. I'm definitely, definitely pleased with this one. Okay. Now I'm going to fold this up and set it aside. And now the red scarf. This is oh, the same color as my lipstick, which was, is a whole, it's a whole fun story. I'll talk about it later, this red lipstick. But um, this has, oh my goodness, in the main body of the scarf has a really interesting detail. It's my, almost almost like cheetah spots or leopard leopard print or it's just like an animal print in the metallics. It's um not obnoxiously animal printed, but it's really cool. It's good the different in some ways I look at it, it looks silver. Some ways I look at it, it looks gold. Some, and then you can see a little bit of red, a red tint to some of it, almost like a rose gold. Um, but that's really cool. It's really cool. It runs from side to side on this. And then it runs all the way until, I'm holding it up with my chin. It runs all the way until the end where you get this beautiful, it's like a flower garden down at the bottom you have the flowers and leaves and stems it's like almost like a rosemary in the back <laughs> rosemary and um marshmallow blossoms so these are really pretty i like the way that is on the very ends you have a little bit of fringes and as you can see it's more metallic on this side with the red being the color of the motifs. So it is reversible. It's rather lovely. And the material, I forgot to talk about the material. It's a nice lightweight material. It doesn't have a tag on it, so I'm not sure of the fabric content, but it's nice. It's kind of crisp feeling, but it still feels like it's gonna flowy wrap really well. Um, it's not slippery, so that's a good thing. Um, having a silk in a silk would be would be um, challenging, not impossible, but challenging to to wrap with. So I'm I'm liking that it has a bit of texture. So I'm looking forward to wrapping with this. I'm not going to wrap with it today because I'm really enjoying this, really enjoying this wrap. Um, so this was part of the resubscription 
Now I'm folding it the way I would fold it if I were just putting it away, but I'm gonna put it on the side here and I'm probably going to wrap with this one on Wednesday. Probably Wednesday. Okay. And I'm probably going also, when I wrap with this on Wednesday, this gives me time to pull scarves from the collection so I can show you what this will do with different scarves, how it will mix and match and look with a couple of different colors. Um, when I say a couple, I, pro I mean three, because three is my, my number. So that will be Wednesday. Okay. Now I do have a full week of, of um, tutorials on the way this week because um, I've got quite a few things to to go through and talk about and wrap. So this will be, so I'm going to make a note that this one will be Wednesday. Okay, so. All right, I've got a little sticky, sticky, um, label here and oh my goodness stick stick that in. okay now also in this bag is this month's scarf of the month now I opened it I did but this year unlike last year I am not going to throw away the bags last year I just got rippy and into them and all the plastic was shredded. It's, it was, it was unfortunate when I had to relabel and rebag for the entire year for the, the roundup session at the end. So, um, this year I'm going to do much better at saving the bag. So I'm going to be super careful. Um, I get, I did open this one up to take a peek at it. Um, cause I'm impatient. But, to show it to you. I will be filming a tutorial for this a little bit later today, probably be posting it um, in a few days. I'm not sure, but this is super cool. I really like the variegated um, pashminas. This one is a very, very pretty rainbow. It's very saturated in color. It's similar to the signature scarf, but it has the, the beautiful, oh my goodness, let me get this up here. It has the beautiful peacock feather design in it, which is different than the signature scarf with that has a paisley design. So it's really, really saturated in color. It's really beautiful. I'm looking forward to wrapping with this one. I'm feeling lots of pleats maybe with some tails so that um, I can use the accessory and you'll see in a minute when I fold this guy up. The pashmina, of course, is a, not as heavy. This pashmina is, is a, it's the weight of the Lakeshore Bliss. We'll just cut it all out. It's not the heavy one like the Cranberry or the Tapestry. It's a nice light pashmina like the Lakeshore Bliss. It does have a a little bit of stretch to it, not as much as the Lakeshore Bliss, but just a little tiny bit of stretch. So that's helpful when wrapping. Okay, I'm gonna fold this up neatly because I'm going to definitely be wrapping with that one um, shortly. And just wanted to give you guys a, a preview of what, what it was. Um, and the accessory is something I haven't received um, in a Rapunzel Scarf of the Month kit. Um, it's a French clip. Um, I've received headbands, I've received pins, but not the French clip, which is awesome. I used to wear these all the time as a teenager and a preteen. These were super popular. I have to say I'm dating myself um, that way back in the late 80s and into the 90s. I haven't seen these much since. I think they fell out of favor because um, you can get your hair a you're not really careful with placement you can get your hair caught in the closing mechanism and it rips it out also I think if you wear them too much um, they damage the hair but not a problem I'm having here because I'm not putting it in my hair 
I'm going to be putting it into my scarf. What I used to do, this is kind of just an aside, um, this piece here, my hair was so, so thick and so long um, that I would pull this piece out and just have the clip and it would hold in with my, my all my hair, like right in here between this piece and this piece here. I'm not going to do that here because I think that would be, that would be a bad idea. Also, these have the closing mechanism, one, two, three. So if you're going to wrap it with a different texture or weight scarf, or maybe you have um, more of a knot or, or less of more of a knot, more of a scarf to go around or less of a scarf to go around, saying like all of this versus just a little piece here, um, it, it can adjust to tighten so that the the barrette doesn't fall out. Okay. I do like the design on the front. It's a really, really beautiful flower with leaves. It's all crystallized and it, it's in the purpley colors. It's, um, oh my goodness, like a lilac and like a steel blue. So, or is that more of, I'm trying to think of the colors. It's um, maybe a, viol a violet and the other, the other purple blue color is like a cornflower maybe. I'm, I, I'm, the name of the color is escaping me right now and I apologize for that, but it's rather beautiful with the different, the two diff different colored gemstones. So, and in the center here, this is cut out. So there's no, it's like a nice, a nice blackout right there. So it's kind of cool. All right. So definitely excited to try this, this kit out. Um, okay. Now one more thing. Are you okay over there? <laughs> he made some cute noises and was, was fidgety. So talking about my lipstick, <laughs> I, um, I wore this, a, a brown winged liner yesterday it was the eyeshadow look um with a really nude lipstick but i was like this would really really look good with a really bright red lipstick like aoc wears and i was like tomorrow tomorrow definitely got to try that tomorrow so today i decided definitely going to put on the red i really like the way the red pops um this kind of seems kind of the set back the the brown it's while it's dramatic it doesn't look like my eyes and my lips are competing for attention um so it's more of a subdued i think it has to do with the scarf choice because this the eyeshadow matches my scarf but um in case you're interested in the color of the lipstick it's a liquid lipstick by anastasia beverly hills it's this liquid lip here i find that this formula um, dries down really well and doesn't transfer to my teeth. It doesn't transfer to my mask. No, my hands, not that much. You can see I really was pushing on that. So to have that little teeny tiny bit, if I were wearing an absolute, um, I've been kissing Mike all day, so it didn't show up. But to have that be the only amount by pressing that hard and wiggling be the only amount on there, amazing. Because um, a standard red lipstick would be all over my face. Um, that was a really big thing. We're all wearing the masks because it's the responsible thing to do. Um, but we all wanna have that, well, maybe not all of us, but I know I wanna have the lipstick on. I love to wear lipstick. So having this formula dry down, um, and not transfer keeps it when I take my mask off I don't have lipstick all out here looking like a clown but this one is let's get my eyeballs working because they make the they make the writing so teeny let's not make that symbol um they make the writing so teeny itty bitty teeny itty bitty um it's a uh, chrome red chrome red that's what this is um I do have one, one complaint is I can't wear this every day. Um, 
it's it's kind of drying to the lips um, this particular color is the other colors I have in the set aren't so bad they they don't dry out my lips and make them feel all parched but this one I feel like I need to moisturize my lips at the end of the time I wear it so just a food for thought it's um not for me it's not a deal breaker because again I will just put moisture on my lips later today when I take this off you can even put on a lip gloss um, to to um, keep it from being so dry but um, it will break down the lipstick itself and it will transfer that's just and I, I, I don't know the chemical reasons for that it just does I just know it does so okay now <laughs> some fun stuff talk about some fun stuff that's going on around here um, the living room <laughs> update on the living room dining room project it is coming along really well um, we've got all the light fixtures in the ceiling and the two ceiling fans in the living room my husband is awesome um, putting those up and we have the all the walls in the living room are completely done obviously the ceiling is completely painted um, I've rearranged the furniture in there so that we've got some some furniture going on in there so we can watch some TV um, the dining room is coming along I had to patch a big a big hole in the ceiling um, a long long time ago <laughs> I decided I wanted a chandelier in the dining room and there was a, just a high hat in ceiling light up there and it was before they came up with the modifiers for that particular style where you just it would have a cover plate and a piece that skirt in and you had the light and that was it um it was way before those days um now i decided that i wanted to do it on my own because i can do all this stuff myself right um I decided I was going to surprise my husband with this light fixture. It happened to match all the rest of the light fixtures in the house. So I picked it up, I got it home. I was having a hard time getting the light, the old light fixture out of the ceiling. So I cut the hole bigger and that was fine and dandy. Um, it wasn't as ugly as I remembered it when I opened it up. Um, it was just rather large and rather unsightly to see this big, hole when our new light fixtures are only about so big um so i had to patch that now <laughs> i did a really good job hanging that like that dangly light fixture um and it was pretty it was pretty we had a couple issues with it and i didn't keep a i'm not keeping a chandelier in the living room in the living room in the dining room because we all hit our head on it everybody hit their head on it constantly no matter how high i seem to to take it to take it up we hit our head on it and um it was because it wasn't centered in the center of the dining room it was just kind of up there um i don't know what they were thinking when they put the <laughs> put the light fixtures in our house when it was built but it was just kind of there there's so it was like an afterthought i wish they would have not put one up there um it would have it just really just let us do it we could do it or let us pay somebody to do it it, it it that would have been better than having just eh, well, some random spot let's stuff a light up there that didn't help out and that's the reason is it didn't help out with the lighting over top of the dining room table um it was just kind of one small light off to the corner i'm like why 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 would you do that so that's why i was like oh i could replace that with a chandelier it will have much more light yeah now no 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 I learned my um, limitations again while that what I did get it up there it was up there really nicely I had a big um, at the, it's like the Victorian houses they have these these big um, I, don't know, I don't know what they're called they're circles that are decorative they have filigree and all kinds of um, it's not a mandala, but it's a big, big circular piece that just kind of sticks up on the ceiling and the light fixture hangs out of the center. I had one of those. It was only about so big, um, but I had one of those up there and it was pretty for a while, but we were changing it out. We're going more sleek, just more efficient. 
and um, I just had to patch that up. So all the walls in the dining room are done. The ceiling needs to be painted after I finish. It's all patched up and I've begun smearing on the uh, ceiling icing. It's called something. And if I had the bucket in front of me, I could tell you exactly what it's called. But the stuff that, that makes it nice and smooth where you've had to patch up. It, to me, it's like it's like smearing on icing and doing the sanding and stuff. So yeah, that's what we're working we we are working on right now. Um, it's got the second coating on, and then I'm going to go down there and probably later today and do the sanding, and then probably do some more feathering out so that you don't notice that one spot. Um, now that part I'm really good at because I'm used to icing cakes and decorating cakes. So this part I'm really good at. Um, the challenge is doing it on the ceiling versus on the wall. So <laughs> that's that's my that's the challenge because my neck's back like this and I'm working above my head. Um, that's that's kind of the challenge. So with the um, with all the work, and I know this is. This one's a long one, but I just feel I feel chatty today. Um, if you if you're tired of hearing me chat, do have a wonderful day, and thank you for holding in here and hanging in here this long. But with all of the work, with the rolling of the paint and all of the the smearing on of the 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 icing patch, the the stuff, the dry the drywall patchy stuff. Um, my hands are incredibly sore. They're dry from all the washing on top of all the washing, the extra washings from the, uh, from the COVID, the, the fear of the COVID. Every time we walk out of the house, it's like, wash, 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 extra sanitizer kind of thing. And then on top of that, I've got all the washing of my hands from, um, getting covered with the drywall dust from sanding and, the actual product because I'm a little bit messy with it. Also the paint gets on my hands. So I'm constantly washing my hands. So my hands are dry and they're very, very sore um, from doing the, the rolling of the, the paint. So struggling with that, but I'm working through it. Now I will tell you the first, the first week, <laughs> the first week of doing the modifications is a, it's a lot a lot of work it's a lot of physical labor to get all this stuff done so i'm exhausted i'm extremely tired from from doing all that that stuff you know on top of um all of this modification in the living room dining room i'm also doing a house declutter um which probably is not the smartest thing to do um when we're when we when we're, we've we're tackling such a big project to add another big project on top of it. But I think if I didn't do that, the declutter would definitely not be working. It would definitely be stalled out because when I get tired of doing, or I hit a spot where I can't work past on the, um, the renovation, I have this other project that I can, I can switch to. And then when this gets overwhelming, I can go back over here and work more on physical stuff, you know, getting, getting the living room and dining room done and all that, that, that stuff. So it's the, the two balance each other out incredibly well. Um, so I'm not just physically exhausted. I'm mentally exhausted as <laughs> all over, just, just so tired. But, um, the getting rid of things is really hard. Um, I probably should have rented some type of dumpster, um, even if it was just one of the, the uh, just a really small one, um, because where there's so much stuff in the house, um, I've, I've realized that. So I've, I've just an example for me, um, my crafting stuff. I keep everything. If the piece of fabric is this big or bigger, I'm keeping it because there is a purpose for it. I can use it in a patchwork quilt. I can use it to make a, a decoration for um, a little dress. I can, you know, just, I can put it together to make a little, little jacket for my sweetheart over there. And there's so many things that I could do with this stuff. I mean, even um, old jeans, you know, we have jeans that just split. Um, if, if you're like me, I still do like to wear a nice pair of jeans. My husband really requests it because, um, 
I don't know, he likes jeans. So I'll wear them for him. But um, being a lady with rather stout thighs, they rub together in the center and I get a hole or the jeans are not exactly what they were back in the day and they don't aren't and I don't I don't want to put down anybody's any manufacturers any any companies but they're not made as well as they used to be jeans are just not it's at least what's commonly available um, and I, I have a hard time spending a hundred dollars plus for a pair of jeans that may not have this problem. I I just, I can't do it, especially if I'm only gonna wear them once or twice a month. I don't wear jeans often. It's, they're not, for me, they're not comfortable. Um, it's just not something I like. But I have a large se selection of jeans that were um, Alyssa's, Derek's, and Chaska's, as well as David's that have gotten holes in them. They have gotten um, the one, the one manufacturer just splits at the upper thigh from seam to seam. Just, I don't know why it does it, but if you're picturing the, the, um, the upper thigh here and it's right, right where the jeans would be. If you cut them off into cut off shorts and did the hem, they would be way inappropriate they would be just way inappropriate. Um, so it just, it's really, really frustrating. Stopping that thought going on. So I keep these things, um, in a big bin because I've also, I've repurposed old jeans into a denim jacket. Um, I've worn the, I wear the denim jacket a lot right now. I'm a little bit too heavy to wear it. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to be working on that um, because I've got my, I've got my partner to work on that with, and it's not my husband. Um, his, his knees are bothering him too much for, for extra walking or extra doing of exercises, but got my, my daughter in there who, because of school, you know, COVID, her school isn't going back in session this semester. Again, this is two and a half semesters of her being at home. Um, it's safer for, safer for her, but she's also missing out on, this is her junior year. She's also missing out on a lot of, of typical college activities, you know, hanging out with her friends and I don't know, it's kind of bumming her out, but, um, she's going to, we're going to take up the exercise. Now, if we can get the cats trained on the leash as well, um, Catwalking would be a thing too, taking the cats on hikes and stuff. Right now, Micah is, he will go outside with the leash on and he's fine. You know, he's fine with that. He's cool. Um, cars scare him. <laughs> Dogs scare him. People scare him. Loud noises scare him. So that's kind, it's kind of hard to put him under that much stress to take him for a walk but we might try putting, once Alyssa gets um, Luna, we might try getting them out to the um, the local, uh, what is it, like Red Run Trail is our local trail. We might take them up there and let them on their leashes walk around and inspect nature and stuff. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worried about foxes and other wild animals. They tend to be standoffish here. With, the, with one exception, my husband told me about the fox that followed him to his truck years and years ago. But otherwise, they, they tend to be standoffish, so I'm not worried too much about taking him out and having wild animals do wild animal things. So, okay, so <laughs> I got into talking about weight loss. Oh, my goodness. Okay, that's that's my, my struggle. Um, this past year, I've I've put on a lot of weight not just because of not going out and no gym access, but because my thyroid has gone, it's just been, you know, that, and that caused a lot of other problems. So between, it's like my thyroid started acting up, then my iron levels dropped because I had female issues. It's been, and, and it's just been a year and a half that it's like, 
So um, another reason I don't leave the house often because, oh gosh, that's the, that's the last thing I need is, is the COVID on top of all the other issues I've been having recently. And I know there are a lot of people and I, who have worse problems than I do, worse, worse health problems than I do. I don't mention these things to get sympathy or to be, you know, that I just mention them because that's what's going on. And I think, think it's important that, you know, I'm 41, I'm going to be 42 soon. It's some things that just happen at this age. And it's, um, it feel, it feels okay to share it. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm bringing it up. Um, now, where was I before I got to talking about that stuff? <laughs> oh, so I'll talk to you about um, Alyssa's baby. She's getting she's getting her sweet little old man kitten. Um, I'm going to put a video. I'm going to put the little clip, um, a little photo clip in. But I wanted to show off her baby. See if I can find him again. He looks like a little old man. Here's one photograph of him. He's um, black, mostly black, but he's got little white spots. His little toes, you can see his little toes right down here. They're dipped in white and he's got a little apron right here. And a goatee, oh my gosh, he's got a little white goatee. All of his whiskers are white. Let's see if I can find him. I have another photograph on here of him. He is so sweet. Um, he looks like he's a cuddler. He looks definitely looks like he's a very shy, very, he's, he's definitely, um, Alyssa's kind of cat. Okay. All right. This one downloaded this way. So there him is. I'm going to, I'm going to put the photograph up at the end, but He's so cute. He's with his little sister or who's with his sister. There's a litter mates, but he's so cute. And yes, it is a boy named Luna. Alyssa picked out the name before she realized the sex of a kitten and works. It works. I personally, I'm going to, like I call, he's, he's Micah monster. I am going to be calling him lunatic because I have a feeling that he's going to get in the house and just go, go spastic and be all cute you know he'll get the zoomies and he'll be just really crazy so it's going to be exciting um we're i'm watching <laughs> i'm watching lots and lots of uh, jackson galaxy just to make sure we introduce these two sweethearts properly um don't want to start them off on the wrong foot um so <laughs> it'll be it'll be interesting i know i know they'll get along micah's pretty laid back he's pretty calm um, pretty fun loving kitten. So, and I don't think we've waited too long to socialize him. I know we did have litter mates at one point, but he's been a long time without, it's been since August. So since he's had a, another cat to play with, but it's going to be exciting because I think he's lonely. I think his little, little self is lonely. It's probably why he follows me from room to room. <laughs> It's like he's constantly attached at my hip. So that's it. Um, I've got really quickly, I'll just go over this because um, I've rambled on about stuff today. I just feel like I just needed to chit chat. Um, I've got... For the videos for this week, I've got an entirely full week of videos that I've planned out. Um, later, I'm going to be filming the Scarf of the Month video. I will probably post that Thursday-ish. Um, let's see. I've got the Wednesday. There's my Wednesday, which is the um, resubscription kit from Rapunzel. I do have another video um, of the cap that I wore for Shabbos. I wore this cap a couple of times over the week. A couple of times. I wore this cap on the weekend. Um, I wore this on Saturday. It's a Friday all day, Friday evening, um, Saturday. And 
I want to talk about that. I do have some of that, my initial reaction to it. And the, um, when I put it on for the first time, I have that already taped because I did it on Friday. I need to not video on Fridays um, because I never get a chance. So it, at least recently, I don't get a chance to put them up before Shabbos and I don't video. I don't do anything with the videos Friday through Saturday because I get a day off. It's fun. It's a good day to rest. So um, I want to talk about my um, overall feelings about this this cap. Um, this one was from Landana. So I want to talk about that. Um, I also have a wrap coming up with this other scarf from Landana. So that's going to be probably going to do this one tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll probably do the video with this cap and this scarf just just to um, to have it be a Tuesday, a wonderful Tuesday talk and wrap session. Um, so I think I think so today, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, if I get a chance to do something something quick for Friday, I'll 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 get it up. Um, I do want to do a live. I accidentally ugh, in December, one of my videos uplot uploaded as a live and I didn't realize it. It was, it was embarrassing and crazy. Um, but I really do want to do a live at some point. I haven't figured out the, the right day for doing that and the right time. So if you're watch still watching this and you have some suggestions, that would be great. Um, it's just figuring out, I want to do it, but just figuring out the logistics is, is the thing. So I, it'd be great, um, to interact with you guys live. That would be so cool. Um, I will not, I do, would not have a moderator, so I don't even know how to set up one of those. So I would hope that the ladies that follow me are, are kind and considerate and compassionate and understanding. And I don't think anybody has um, trolled me yet. Um, so I don't, I'm not that, I'm not that interesting to get trolls. So <laughs> it's like one of those things, you know, you've, you know, you've, you've reached a lot of people when you get the trolls, but it would be interesting to get, um, just to, just to chit chat and maybe answer some questions you have. Um, I know I'm not, I'm not a know everything, but I, I think I know a decent amount. I've been rapping for a really, really, for me, it feels like forever, but uh, for um, quite a few years I've been rapping now. So I could probably answer some of the questions. Excuse me, my nose itches. Um, and, you know, I'm not, definitely not um, an expert at the makeup y stuff, but, you know, if you have questions, um, I'm here. So, okay, that's my, that's my, my thinking for a live, just, you know, kind of a wrap and chat, only interactive wrap and chat. So let me know your thoughts. Um, please, 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 if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to, to get to, um, to talk with a lot of people. Um, not, I don't, I don't have crazy, um, you know, expectations, but also, I don't know. I don't know. I've been having a lot of fun with you ladies. So, oh my goodness. I feel like I have to sneeze. Hopefully not. Nope. All right. I've, I've rambled on for 56 minutes. I will end this now. <laughs> um, have a wonderful day ladies, and I will see you in the next video.